What could go wrong? I don't know. Yeah, but it's, it, it, here we go. We're live. It's Sunday. We're all tired for some reason or another. Um, some of us are. I guess we've shifted from tired sleepy to tired hyper. Is, is that how we we call it, we quantify it these days? Or tired delirious, one of the two. Delirious the one. Yeah, I, I'm liking that one. Tired delirious. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving the mic and it's too many spores, man. Yeah. <laughs> that works. That works. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us here on a, a, another off week, I should say, Sunday morning, Shadow Watch, live D&D. We're going to do the things. We're going to have some fun in the Underdark, you know, compared to like some places like Barovia, which apparently wasn't so fun last night from what I hear. <laughs> well, fun for some, maybe not fun for others, but anyways, <clears throat> uh, shout out and thank you real quick just to get the bills paid, so to speak. Sirenscape for the background music and soundboards. Uh, this is a custom set put together from uh, various Underdark themed uh, sound sets from Sirenscape. Go to sirenscape.com to check out all the various tools and options you have there. Um, if you're enjoying what you're watching, please consider hitting a follow if you're new here. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, please consider hitting the like, the subscribe, and the little bell notification. Uh, if you're enjoying what, what you're seeing and you want to support the studio so we can keep uh, taking the bar up a few more notches, and keep doing what we do, uh, please go to patreon.com slash scuba studio and consider being joining uh, the ranks of the patrons. Uh, throughout the game today, if you feel so inclined to want to intervene in either the player's behalf or other. Uh, <laughs> this is where payback from last night comes in. <laughs> or other uh you are considered the trickster so there's a list of options here in the in the uh in the panels here on twitch uh where you can uh affect how the stream goes through various means uh through contributions whether it's channel points bits or direct donation the choice is yours and the effect is yours to use um yeah i think that's it for the pay for that part uh <laughs> i'm tired i'm it's been a long week, <laughs> a very long week. But I can say next week we will be back to our regularly scheduled programming. Tuesday night, 9 p.m., Scuba and the Rye podcast where we discuss all manner of gaming-related things and other odds and ends we find on the internet. I'm sure we're going to have a lengthy discussion about the Snyder Cut that has just dropped. Um, <laughs> Hopefully not as lengthy as the movie. I think I got to part four with a buddy of mine Thursday and then stop because we were trying to watch it together. I'm tempted to go and finish it, but I've heard a lot of the comments so far. So it's like, eh, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then next Saturday, back to regular time, 10 a.m. This crew for Shadow Watch in the Underdark, 8 p.m. Saturday is challenge accepted. Uh, they're gonna do where they continue their adventures um, from what happened last time. And then Sunday is Sunday with Scoob. I actually picked up the latest uh, paint night kit from WizKids. It is the Zombie Ogre. And I will be doing that uh, painting next uh, Sunday, 12 noon, over on our YouTube. Back to regular schedule. All the social media posts will go out after this when we have a moment to breathe and drink more coffee. <laughs> Or someone will no. end it at hour two. Coffee mm. is always a good choice. If not Cheers. biscuits and gravy. Yeah, I was like, next part, here's a good stopping point, because, I mean, it, it, it's long. I'm trying to see if it justifies that one review we, I heard about, where this was this, this, if you wanted to watch a superhero movie that was equivalent to watching paint dry, this was the movie for you. I wanted to see if that was a valid assessment of the film. So, all right. All those shenanigans out of the way. How are you guys this morning? Rolling along. <laughs> I, I, I think I think Will's face totally exemplifies the thought process. <laughs> Collapse. Sleep is for the dead. Who needs sleep? Yeah, it was one of those things when I. 
Yes, Obsidian. <laughs> no, you agree with I that need statement? sleep. No, I need sleep. <laughs> I don't need sleep. I do. Me too. Oh, oh inspiration for Will right off the bat. Oh, thanks, guys. You can tell I need it. <laughs> uh, sleep may be for the dead, but it's the undead that wander Barovia, and they're the ones that kept you up last night. Yeah. Darn tomato, tomato. <laughs> That reminds me back of those days where it's like we had the all night gaming session, a couple of cases of soda, a couple of people sitting around playing multiple characters. And it's like, we need to go to sleep. And, my, and our DM was like, you have plenty of time to sleep when you're dead. Let's keep playing. Ah, <laughs> oh, so we young again. <laughs> I know, right? Ridiculous. I can't do that anymore. I hit 30 and I was like, oh, I'm 80 now. I need to sleep. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> Finding a potion for Anarian. Sweet. Thank you, thank you. Might come in handy in this here battle. That look. I don't think I've made that into it. No, nope, <laughs> I'll do that. You had me on a D20 last week for one. Let's say, what do you need? A D100? Uh, D20. I'm going to put the list together right now. I said, it's been a, it's been a week. <laughs> Let's see. Potions. Common. Uncommon. And rare. All right, Anari, roll that D20. 13. 13. Oh, this one's cute. Uh, yeah, I hope I'll save that means for when good. it's appropriate in the story. <laughs> and, uh, Obsidian, beat uh, Nat 20 on your first dice roll. Yeah, now I have to do adding. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, look at the grin. Look at the grin. <laughs> look at that grin. Uh, you're just burning all of your channel points, aren't you? Trump says, How? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Fireball. I was also going to try and give the DM inspiration as well, but it's out of stock. Yeah. <laughs> try. Oh, well. I don't think any of us are missing that. Yeah, we need the, uh, the the we need the trickster symbol to be shined in the sky for the wild magic to flow in. <laughs> no, no. I say not not needed. Not, <laughs> not needed. needed. Thank you. <laughs> no, nope, we're good. Oh well. Yeah. Hey, that means eight months sub. Thank you. That's far eight months sub. Thank you. Awesome. Alrighty, let's get into it. Okay, so where we left off, the party was uh, making, had um, met the, had arrived at the Mykonid colony in the upper garden of Dual, of Dualian, and had accepted a task of going to find a group of mind flayers who have been uh, causing uh, mischief by uh, poisoning or polluting or contaminating uh, the myconids via water supply and airborne uh, pathogens to get them to turn violent. This is a very contra contrary to myconid society. Uh, they, uh, the party was give was given a guide to navigate across the upper garden to one of the massive, massive stairwells that lead back down to the city proper. The party had descended uh, the partially collapsed stairwell and then started to travel uh, south to uh, where they believe the mind f where the illithid appear uh, potentially where the illithid are, are holed up um, for the most part wasn't terrible per se they did happen to find some they found some some a uh, couple of a uh, couple of daily life in the underdark uh, events um, but they did come across some areas where uh, the contamination of the uh, Underdark from the Abyss 
had started to infiltrate into this area of the Underdark. Um, when we left off, they had uh, found this rickety, this this chasm with a rope bridge spanning it. It was roughly 30 feet across, 30 feet down to the bottom of where where this bridge was. Um, as in crossing the bridge through a variety of creative means, uh, they did happen to encounter a pair of dr of driders and a group of giant spiders. Uh, after dispatching uh, the pair of driders and the spiders, they realized that the they realized that throughout through the course of this, another pair of driders and another group of giant spiders had come up from behind. And as we left off, they had attempted to uh, the driders had attempted to cast spells to make it easier to attack. Uh, the only one affected by this was Wilhelmina. She is now glowing in a kind of violet purple. <laughs> as the spell takes effect, takes effect. So we are starting off with a initiative. We've already rolled the initiative. We already got our encounter built. So here we're going to dive right into it with the top of the initiative order. Um, to set the scene, uh, you, uh, Will and uh, Obsidian are on the, are at the bottom of the, of the shallow ravine, 30 feet down. Uh, where the spot where the bodies of the two driders are uh, the uh, on, at the top of the ravine um, near the bridge is uh, Anari and Shragnaz with a group of giant spider carcasses on the opposite side of the bridge where they had come from is where the two driders and another group of eight giant spiders are all on the ledge the spiders are positioning themselves to perform some type of ranged attack. Uh, the driders had cast their spells, so they're they're done uh, as far as any sense of surprise. Because at the minute the spell was being cast, uh, Anari and Obsidian and Rustam would realize something's not right and seen them. Unfortunately, will suffer the effects of the spell. So, top of the initiative order is Anari. All right. How do you wish so, to proceed, sir? <laughs> I'm going to uh, go ahead and take a bow attack against uh, one of the driders. Alrighty. So I will do two ranged. First will be a 16. 16 will not hit. Uh, the next will be a 23. 23 will hit. So that is going to be uh, eight points, no, six points of uh, magical piercing. Indeed, Beyond is letting me down this morning, so I'm switching to physical dice next. You said how much, how many points of piercing damage? I think it was six. Six points of piercing damage. All righty. All right, this brings us to Obsidian. Um, real quick, Anar, did you want to move or anything from your current position, standing on the on the edge? Because you would have, by your last in the last combat, you were firing down onto the drider, so you're right there on the edge. Yeah, I, I think um, based on where they are at this particular point in time, and the only way across is going to be that bridge. I'm going to probably just hold still for right now. Okay. Obsidian, you're up. Can I reach them with 50 feet of movement on the broom? At a diagonal up. 30, 30, probably not. This would be more, think of this as more like a right angle triangle, where the uh, the vertical side and the horizontal a side are 30 and 30. B squared equals C squared, so that's 30 I squared sure times 30 squared, square root of that. Oh my god. <laughs> and you, you 90 and 90, that's 180. 
so it's about 90 so roughly 90 feet on the diagonal so you'd get most of it if you dashed you'd get the, all the way but you'd be right up in melee with the whole lot of them at the at the at the for the start of your next turn uh, let me see bonus action is a dash for me okay yes kids geometry is fun to learn <laughs> learn it <laughs> Not you can, fun to you do. Can, I'm you can even either. use it in D and D. A park may come to diagonal movement on the flat, in which case it's always diagonal square is five foot. <clears throat> <laughs> oh god, I'm done. Okay, I am going to go ahead and um, bonus action dash to them, and as my attack action, I'm going to hold an action for uh, a sword attack through green flame blade until I have a partner next to me. Okay, so you dashed up there. Yep. And you're going to hold a green flame blade for oh, my if, action. As, uh, as your action. Yep. You, can you dash as a bonus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as a rogue. Sweet. Rogues get bonus so you're holding, action. You're holding, a green, you're holding a green flame blade for when Another party member is right next to you to, uh, for the attack. Yes. Yes. Okay. Duly noted. With that, Will, in your, in your glowing fury. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't like that I'm glowing. This makes me uncomfortable. Ironically, um... you wore an appropriate flannel to go with that because that's roughly the color you're glowing. <laughs> I see the little hints of purple as the light hits it, so I imagine it's something purple. It's, it is my color. Um, okay, so... Uh, sorry, I wasn't expecting to be up this soon. I don't know if I should... Ah, screw it. I'm going to fly up, try to uh, follow Obsidian. Okay. I can't bonus action dash like he can. But you could take your action to dash. That would get you right in there and trigger his held action. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so you get up there. Held action goes off. You said it was a green flame blade? Yeah. All right, go ahead and roll for your attack with the green flame blade on which on one of the driders or the spiders? Oh, I'm doing the... So how close together are the... They're kind of right there. It... it Picture, kind of picture that end scene of uh, two towers when the when the Roha or when the Rohirrim are about to run down the mountain. It's that big line right there. They're just right there. Most of the, the two driders are right there on right there next, next to, to each other. other. The spiders perfect. are spreading out the rest of the distance. You got a group on the other side of the bridge. Yep, perfect. So, um, through my good buddy trickster friend, I get a nat twenty on the roll. That works. Um, and thankfully, the two drider are right next to each other. So the first one is going to take. Now, now is this the same one Anari hit with the with the arrow or the other one? Sure. Okay. Same one Anari and hit with the arrow. All right. So he gets eight through green flame blade, 14, 18 through sneak, plus. Six. Then I get to roll. So, it, oh God, it's way too early for this much math. 14 and 18 is 32, plus six is 38, plus 3d6 is 13. So that's 51 to the first guy. Okay. The second guy on Green Flame Blade gets eight plus one plus a 1d8. So that's, I rolled a four. That's 13 on him. All right. And immediately after, I can use psych or whales from the grave after I do sneak. So he, all the second rider will also take 12 plus 7 is 19. Cool. Now Necrotic. go and roll your D100. And now roll my D100. It was a wild magic kicked off, and your green flame blade yep. triggers it. Oh boy. Get a seven we already know what brain. this one is. It's an eight. Yeah, that's going to suck. That is a fireball. Yeah. Says me casting it. <laughs> Centered on yourself. 
will yeah. make a dexterity <laughs> saving throw. Um, At this point, you're going to hear this little goblin voice scream across the chasm. Oh, that's my job. <laughs> um, you can have it. 20 feet. So, Anari and Trag, you guys are safe. Well, both Driders, all eight spiders, and Obsidian all have to make dexterity saving throws. Is it? Hey, at least it's hitting more of them than it is of us. Very good point. <laughs> yeah, thank you, TCG Striker. We, we, we love you. Oh, hi. I didn't know you were here. So I would waste another nat 20 on this for 29. Oh. You had another nat 20? What? You what? No, no, no. I rolled. I rolled. A, I rolled. Oh, you rolled a nat 20. Okay. All right. This is going to take me a minute. Actually, can you play your uncanny dodge against that as well and take no damage? Probably not on the broom. He probably would not let me dodge out of the way. True, well, true. it's centered on you, so there's only so much dodge. Oh, there's only so far I can go. <laughs> yeah, just repositioning the fireball on the wall a little bit is about as good as it would get. <laughs> I need Text a space plate to roll the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear me, such fun. I look over at Will and go, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's twice as done that now. Okay. Eight. So I'll do all the spiders first, and then I'll do the G riders. Oh, please! Doing that. If I freeze, I, my internet connection is unstable. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm just going to turn to the and go. Oh, you guys are going to have a go me back in people five balls all the time. I haven't done it once yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I cast. Not what I wanted to do. Looks pretty green and flamey to me. What's the D <laughs> what's your spell save DC, uh, Obsidian? God. Uh thirteen. Okay. Oh, I just made it. Ass. <laughs> ass. Ass. Oh. Ass. Four failed, four passed. So, what's the damage on the fireball? What do I need to roll? <laughs> Eight d6. I, I, don't have the, I don't have the spell, so I don't uh, You um, need to roll... Um, 8d6. 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 I'm doing that in D&D Beyond, because I can't do all the math. <laughs> it's bad when our math guy can't even do Oh, math. 21. A 2, a 4, a 1, a 3, a 2, and a 1. Because you don't cast it normally. <laughs> so 21 points of fire damage. So true. Fire damage. So true. I said, watch me roll all ones next time. Fireball, eight <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> oh no, that would be so bad. Not a very powerful fireball. <laughs> no, it is. Well, it's coming from the rogue. Of course it's not. Do you get a sneak attack on that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's not the sneak attack, right? It's the the attack roll was a nat 20. Should that carry over and just make it the full oh. <laughs> six times eight and just let it run? <laughs> Actually, you're probably right. It should. <laughs> oh, <pardon. laughs> Will's face says it all right there. It's like, wait a minute. Max no, no, plus 8d6? It's 42 yeah. points of 48 <laughs> points of fire plus another oh, 10 or 21. That's actually the rules as written. Yeah, it would be, because you would add the nat 20 for a ranged spell attack. All right, so I die. Um, I fall. So 8d6, 6 times 8. 48. So on a fail, you take 58 no. on us. On, yeah. 48? 6 times 8 is 48, yeah. So on a fail, you take 48 and 21, so that's 69. And if you save, you take 58. Save, you take 58. Okay, let me roll for the two driders, because that may end this right now. I'm unconscious. Oh my, <laughs> and we both on our brooms fall 30 feet to the ground. So that means oh, we, also take, we also take an automatic failure. 
Hang on, hang on, hang on. I have a thing. Oh, where is it? All right, one failed and one saved. You said the this what's the what was the total fire damage on that? Twenty one plus forty eight. So forty eight plus twenty one would be forty eight, sixty eight, sixty nine. If you fail, yeah. If you fail to save, Mr. Chelly makes a good point in chat. Will? Oh, I don't have Twitch open because it slows my computer down, and I'm already freezing. What do you say? Oh, can't can't will negate nat twenties, but yeah, but I didn't, and we already yeah. did all the damage, and I didn't know there was going to be a fireball. <laughs> Um, I don't yes. think any of us did. <laughs> nope. So one thing to note is Will goes unconscious, starts falling. The um, carving that's in her uh, false arm and then the tattoo that then continues up the rest of her arm starts to glow and she regains consciousness with one hit point and she will try to do everything she can to break Obsidian's fall. And you both get a hill from chat as well. Thank you, TZJ. Like, oh, awesome. that's, that's my gav. Thank well, you, gav. that is uh, quite interesting. Oh my god. So I, have, nuclear I know I have at least one failure. I like how it went from a tiny fireball to a nuclear bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Track us out that going. I was gonna say nuclear bomb from a rogue, nonetheless. From a rogue. <laughs> Accidental nuclear bomb. Those are always great. Uh, how many well, did I kill on that? Uh, so yeah. Um, so <laughs> Will falls. She the thing comes off. She and she catches Obsidian uh, as he as he comes down. So no fall damage to Obsidian for that fall. Um. Trag and Inari, as uh, especially uh, since Trag is the next in the initiative order now, um, you see as this white light shines up centered on Obsidian, and as it clears, mm -hmm. you see you you look down and you see that Will has caught Obsidian, and they're on the bottom of the ravine. Obsidian is unconscious. As you look across, you see these smoldering husks of eight spiders. One of the dryers, the other dryer, horribly burned over 90% of his body, is, 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 is sitting there, kind of looking the about. just happened. <laughs> wow. That's it's now your turn. <laughs> Whose turn? A, a Shragnaz, because the spiders were next in the initiative order. Now they're charred husks, and you hear you smell burned spider. They're not so even twitching anymore. Shrag, Shrag's going to like rock back on his heel slightly as the shockwave comes over, and as he writes himself, he's like, that was cool. <laughs> so, Mr. Dryder, Mr. Crispy, how at you? I think the cat's magic missile at him. <laughs> some more fire. <laughs> yes, actually, just about insults of injury. Due to the ability of my class, I will actually turn each of the magic missiles force damage into fire damage. Yes. <laughs> I feel like for a one under his arm, and like throwing his arm under his leg and then like over his back and just <laughs> send it in. <laughs> Obsidian, you have a nat 20 coming your way. <laughs> I'm scared uh, now. <laughs> so let's just do that. Uh, magic missile. And so that's a four, five, six, ten points of fire damage. Ten points of fire damage? Yep. Pew, pew, pew. Insult to injury is right. It's still standing though. Same on fire. Burn some more. <laughs> it is now his turn. Run away. <laughs> I am going to have him roll a constitution save. And if he fails, he is going to run away. 
<laughs> Which I would cool. think is appropriate psychology at this point. Yep. <clears throat> yep. That is a fail. <laughs> That's a three on the die plus his bonus is not even close to close to halfway. So yeah, he is going to turn and run. I want to shoot at him before he bugs out. And you can certainly do that because now you are next in the initiative order. Wonderful! <laughs> because um, I dog. rolled a nat 20 also for one awesome. attack and an 18 for the other. So uh, The 18 will not hit, but the nat 20 will. Alright. So on the nat 20, he is going to take what is it? Uh, 815. 21 points of magical piercing damage. All righty. He takes it square in the back as he keeps going. <laughs> oh. Wow. Okay, he was not normal droider. That was a lot of damage. Um, Obsidian, death save, nat 20, succeeds. Will, you're up. Is that one hit point too, right? On yeah. a nat 20? Nat 20, you are stable with one hit point. You can start groggily waking up mm -hmm. and and experience with all that fire. Will, what are, what are you going to do? Uh, well, I look up to see where the drider was, and I see a Narian's arrow go flying over. I'm like, okay, he's got this. And I'm just going to uh, sink some healing into Obsidian. I'm going to give him... Um, a spell and a prayer bead. <clears throat> All right. So, come on, scroll for me. Scroll, please. No? Okay, fine. Okay, so that's going to be... <laughs> we're going to do a third level cure wounds. So, oh, good, good. That's 24. So mark that spell off. And then for my prayer bead, that is a second level heal cure wounds. And then what is the heal that I got from the tricksters? How much is that? Uh, if they give a heal, that's a D that's a D10. Okay. And then another 18 healing. Ooh. Yep, heal a player, that is a D D10 of healing. Uh, nat 20 for a save. I rolled a four. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, wow. Oh, no. The heal wow. went to Will. I think there was two heals. One was bits. One was... All right. Let me double check. Actual points. Yeah, I really need to yeah. find a producer. <laughs> one was... Um... Oh, yeah. Obsidian, the bit, the one from TCG Striker for, for bits, that goes to Obsidian. There is another one from Channel Points. That goes to Will. Okay, yes. thank you. I got so you six. Get your D10, D10 to help with the. Thank you. And I'm actually back to more health than when I started the fight. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> you're welcome. That's, what I'm That's a good thing. I don't think I, I don't think that quite quantifies for a good equivalent exchange there. <laughs> Just saying. I oh, know he'll be quite happy with what what happens when he actually sees what happens. All of those have been read up to date. All right, Will did the healing. Um, Shrag, you can still see the drider as it's running. So what do you yeah. wish to do? Uh, roughly how far away do we now if it's dashing? Uh, he would have um, he would have done his movement, so it would have been uh, sixty feet as Anari hit him. So he is uh, roughly 90 feet from your current position, plus or minus 5 to 10 feet. It's yeah, in range then. Um, just for comedy value. <laughs> Let's cast a second level magic missile. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, it's going to be, oh, it's five points to start. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12 points of fire damage. All right, 12 points of fire damage. Still moving. Oh my gosh. 
Uh, Anari, if you, uh, he's going to continue to move what, another what, sixty. So, I he's, say, what is our distance now? Um, fifty. I was going to no, say 90, 90, still... ninety plus another sixty. So he's still within one fifty. So I'm still within range without disadvantage. So I'll take well, take can another you round. See that, but can you see that far? In the, in the dark. Ooh, good point. Good point. Good that, point. That's what I was. Uh, that's what I was getting to. We were kind of again shared mind space. As you could you could take a shot. He's still t if he's still within range, but it would be a disadvantage because technically you can't. Yeah, if your vision 60. is sixty feet. Yeah, he's outside of that. The only one who can see him is Shragnas. All right, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and do it at disadvantage and give it a try. Okay. First is going to be uh, 16. 16 does not hit. The second will be... Uh, yeah, 13 is not going to hit either. Both miss. So you double shot and uh, the, ar the arrows impact and the drider keeps going. Yeah, I can't see him anymore anyway. Okay, so that effectively ends combat. Effectively. <laughs> well, ineffectively, really. Yeah, one we got didn't, away. We didn't yeah. kill the guy, and one got away. But he he, he wasn't doing well. <laughs> Narian has a new nemesis. We must hunt him down. <laughs> Comic value is he then runs into a group of four flaming skulls flying around that are now free. <laughs> Control and they fireball him as well. <laughs> that would be fun. Oh, yeah, I forgot we have little flaming skull buddies running around here somewhere. Oh, Obsidian's gonna get up and hug Will and say thank you and make sure he finds his broom that fell and pick it's it up. A, it's on the ground not too far from you, kind of clink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Well, I, I what just, the like, hell was that? I don't know. Can you not do that again, please? Or, like, give me some warning? I, I don't have that spell. Oh. 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 It's Magic is weird. Very. <laughs> it didn't used to be this weird. Something has gone horribly wrong with the weave. <laughs> A little bit of soot comes out. I probably <laughs> should heal myself, huh? Yes. All right, I'm going to give myself some healing. I'm going to use my last prayer bead of the day. To say, um, Horton. I'll I'm go gonna ahead. Use, I'm going to go ahead and use, I have Artificer Initiate, so I'll cast Cure Wounds on myself using that feat. Traggle to, to, to wow. an area and go to, oh, huh. Maybe the livers are alone now, because if they think we're that crazy to pull kind of that kind of shenanigans, they ain't gonna risk it again, surely. Surely. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> I mean, you'd hope so, but those things are driven by normal <clears throat> motivations. And Arian's gonna look at Shrag and say, we've been in the Underdark how long, and you think they make any sense down here? Yeah, that's true. I'm going to go ahead and uh, recover my rope of climbing, and uh, I'll uh, I'll move the drift globe over so it'll help uh, and our or, uh, help Obsidian and Will be able to uh, see a little easier for whatever they're needing to do, and then be able to come back up to rejoin us. And then after they're back with us, then I'll go ahead and. Uh, recover the drift globe and put it away. <clears throat> it is track. now up on the uh, far side of the ravine. A couple Board of track. Uh, a group of four giant spiders carcasses are all there. Obviously on yeah. the other side you can still smell the burning of the uh, other ones. Yeah, I'm going to look over and go, wow. That was awesome. And because the bridge was combustible, the bridge is now down. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. There's a lot of fire. Oopsie. Damage. Sorry. It's a good thing we're on this side of it. 
Yeah, I think the phrase is can't turn back now. Uh, another okay. inspiration for Will. Oh, thank you, guys. That is good. So <laughs> once we're back up on the um, <clears throat> on the same side of the ravine, mm -hmm. um, what are our um, where's Cablis first of all, and second of all. What are Cabalus, our travel options? Uh, Cabalus had uh, taken up a position hiding behind one of the dead spiders near the rock. So he was uh, out of the way and safe. Okay. She kind of stands up and looks at y'all completely befuddled because even in her hiding spot, the bright light was shown. And it's like, y'all aren't subtle, are you? Only sometimes. Okay. Well, I'm desperate glad I'm on your side. Call for desperate measures. Well, I don't think we should hang out here because bright lights tend to attract company. They do indeed. Lead the way. Let us know where we're headed. Yep. Well, we. Go down this path and we'll go into the next district and kind of see from there. <laughs> Starts to lead you down into the uh, into another residential district. Um, she says, this one's fairly easy. It's just, we just have to walk straight and not deviate too much and we should be fine. And this is one of the large main tunnels. It's 20 feet by 20 feet as kind of going. Um, Okay. Really wild. All right. So as you're as you kind of progress down, you along this path uh, to the left and to the right are various little offshoots into large into other caverns, which more of these residential type buildings. Okay. As you go through. Um, <clears throat> Obsidian and uh, Anari, or Obsidian, you got the passive of twenty, right? Or is your, or is Will's passive twenty? Will, my okay. 18. Will and Obsidian and Anari, uh, as you guys are going, uh, kind of looking about, and you're seeing things, you notice that at various spots along the path, you see this kind of fungal growth. In various patches along the uh, the walls and the side, and on the floor and on the ground, um, and you notice that as you kind of get close to it, um, you feel that it, it, as you get within a certain distance, you feel that the temperature seems to drop as you as you pass each of these. You're giving them a, a somewhat wide berth, but you still notice that as you get in there, it's like you all of a, you all of a sudden feel extremely cold, like you're stranded out in the middle of a blizzard. We'll point that out so Shraggy and Obsidian don't walk into them. Um, so when we were with the Mykonids, I spent like half a day kind of talking with one just about all the different kinds of plants. Do I know what this is? Uh, roll a nature check. Okay. And while she's doing that, we would feel the temperature. Shrag and I would feel the temperature. You, you and Shrag right? would feel the temperature too. Um, and okay. the temperature can, Oops. you'll feel the te you feel the temperature drop as you go. Shraggy. did you feel that From... breeze? Ooh. Oh, nice on the fireball. A fifteen. Um, Sorry. <laughs> you didn't really see any examples of this up in the Mykonid Cavern. But in talking with them in your own personal research, you know that these areas look to be uh, patches of a type of mold, uh, commonly referred to as a brown mold. They uh, absorb heat and move toward heat sources. Oh. If you're within 30 feet, the temperature becomes frigid. So no. 
no as you, yeah, you as you start to progress through you notice some of these the temperature is dropping and as you look you see these patches you can avoid them there's enough distance but it's kind of a a zigzag weaving through so are they moving back toward the ravine where the fireball just went off <laughs> uh, not perceptively <laughs> <laughs> Very, very slowly. All right. Um, do you want to take point, Anarian, or should I? I think one of us should kind of help the others navigate. Yeah, try to navigate through. Sure, I'll take point. Okay, I'll go in the back. Go ahead and give me a survival check, Anari. Fourteen. Um, for the most part, you're able to navigate through. Uh, there are a couple of points you guys get pretty close to a few uh, kind of obscure spots. Um, need you to need everybody to make uh, need everybody to make a Constitution saving. So anybody that is within ten feet of me, don't forget you get the plus three on saves. Depends on how huddled up you guys are. <laughs> would assume I'm a bit too far away. 26 for an Aryan. Eighteen. All right. Craig? Well, yeah. Assuming I'm actually hanging to an Aryan's leg, that'll be an eight. Oh, <laughs> Obsidian. Even if I was, even if I was hanging on his other leg, it would only be a nine. So I have a six or a nine, depending on how you want to play it. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Cablis uh, failed that too. Oh no, little buddy. So that's um, you, you guys. Uh, for those who got below a twelve, uh, you feel, um, you all feel everything get really, really cold. All right. Um, for those who got who got below who got below twelve, you get you take twenty five points of cold damage. Uh, for those who succeeded, you take half that. I'm gonna cast and absorb elements to have that. <laughs> that's that's nice stuff. So half of twenty five rounded down twelve. Oops. <laughs> then I did it to a heel. There we go. That's Oof. better. Who failed? Anybody who got below does, 12. So Shrag, does that Obsidian, mean Cablis, and Cablis. Does Cablis drop? Does that, is that all of her health for hit points? No. Cablis actually okay. does, does take the hit, but she's able to keep going. Okay. One so... of the nice things about sidekick rolls is when you have a sidekick, they are the party level. So all hit point increases and everything go at party level. It's one of the one of the nicer bits about a sidekick. Okay. So she has enough hit points to take the hit, but she probably couldn't take many more. I was gonna say, does she need some healing? Uh, yeah, she's gonna need. Oh, a, she's, gonna need she's gonna need some healing for uh, after right. you guys clear the cavern. All right, um, Obsidian, are you okay, or do you need some? help oh, no, he's bloodied he's down to 27 of 71 all right um i'm gonna go ahead and lay hands on um Kablis, yeah. and i will um give her uh how many did she take 25 oh i can't give her back that much um i can give her back 10 okay um so she'll take 10 back 
And then for obsidian, uh, let's see, do I have that spell prepared? Yeah, I'll go ahead and cast um, Cure Wounds at first. Okay. He'll get back uh, eight points. Thank you. Not much, buddy, but hopefully it'll help some. Yeah, we're gonna need a rest soon. Yeah, I think so. If I could get back some hit die. So as you guys, as you guys continue to progress down and, and weaving, weaving through, you get to a point where the road, where uh, a tunnel, another tunnel merges up. And kind of a uh, kind of and kind of basically a merge lane, so to speak. Uh, one coming from the north, uh, more north, uh, coming down, meeting up as you guys are traveling, kind of a, a southeasterly route. As you get to this crossroad, uh, Will and Anari, you guys hear some commo- some some movement down the path. Uh, and as you kind if you as you mention it to the party, Shrag, give me a perception because you're the only one who could see that far. Okay, <clears throat> that's a dirty twenty. All right. <clears throat> so as they tell you, and you look, you see coming down the path from the north, a group of Koatoa and a group of with a group of the of the uh, troglodytes. Do they I are recognize... they're just out you can't tell how big because you're seeing you're seeing probably at the at your 120 feet distance you're only seeing about a third of the total group size just coming into view uh heading down that way they don't they don't acknowledge your they don't notice your presence just yet but you can you can kind of see and with them they can hear okay do they look like the same group that we encountered previously um, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Okie dokie. Oh my word. Yeah, they're definitely fish face. That'll be a five. <laughs> what is Cannot determine if it's the same group or a different group. But either way, it's a it's a it's a it's a pretty decent sized group. You've seen you're seeing pro, you're seeing a f let's see, there's a Is there any place we can hide? I'm going to say I'm going to have a look around and see if there's anywhere else we can get to. Yeah, you see basically... seven coming in, and there's still more coming out as you spend a few minutes to watch. Cool. Is there any way that we can avoid these, or is our interaction with them inevitable? Uh, you could uh, continue down the path and try to get into the next area. Uh and kind of avoid having to deal, having avoid getting in within their line of sight. Does Shrag uh, tell us about this? I'm assuming he tells us what he sees. You assume right. <laughs> yeah, I'll pass, pass on the information to him. So obviously, I'm just sort of weighing up the uh, the options and then obviously I'll point down the, the corridor and say, real quickly, get down there, we can avoid them. I'll cast Pass Without Trace, too, to help our movements go quiet. All right. Go ahead and give uh, do your stealth rolls. Don't forget to add 20. Or, I mean, 10. Add 10. Uh, Cabo, let's get to 20. 32 for an Aryan. All right. 40. Well, 33. Greg? What an, another nat 20 waste. 36. <laughs> all right, so you guys, oh. you guys all kind of like, all right. <laughs> like the Grinch on Christmas night. Yeah, little, little, little animation type tiptoe thing kind of moving in there. Yep. Which moves you into, so avoided that. Guys, at some point we need to stop and, and take an hour to rest. 
as you move into the next area, uh, it's another kind of residential thing. And as you cross into this, you there's a path that leads more directly south and then one that kind of continues along uh, to the east. And as you look, as you uh, going down the one south, there's a couple of offshoots or uh, residential areas. So if you want to try, who's who's gonna who, who's is Anari still in the lead or? Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead and um, if everyone's trying to look for a place to rest, go ahead and uh, give me a survival check. Everybody or? Yeah, okay. we'll go with everybody trying because everybody's trying to find a spot. Nineteen for an Aryan. Okay. Less than that, fifteen. Will. Twenty-three. Right. So I'm going to run trying to find somewhere. I'm going to suggest that I throw up the tiny huts and we disguise it against a rock wall. And we set off to one side. So my survival is 17, based on trying to find somewhere we could drop the ball to actually put it against to give us a clear, safe area. Uh, as a group, you, you're you able to find a spot that looks like it'll it'll serve just rather nicely for that. Cool. I'm going to use my ability to be able to cast a ritual spell at its normal casting time, so it takes one minute to cast, so I'll do that quick one minute cast and pull up the, the orb and try and color in like a rocky kind of marbly kind of pattern to match the wall. Yep. Be able to do that uh, and get it up. So you guys now are inside the little tiny hut and it's uh, properly masked away from uh, any prying eyes for the duration of the spell. So we're taking a short rest, yes? Or is that what I understand? That is up to y'all. It, can we take a long rest, or has it been too soon since we had the last one? And I, I thank you for phrasing my question appropriately, Shad, because <laughs> that's what I meant to ask. <laughs> yes, can you, can, you, you can take either, given the harrowing adventure you've had so far and the amount of time traveled. Uh, you could, you you can to, you can totally do, you can totally do either. I, I would think we would want to take a long rest then in that case. Yeah. That would be my vote. Same vote. I have very little spell slots left, so I would appreciate a long rest. Shrag just sort of like sat there with his little fingers out and he like opens one eye and goes, oh, I'm just sat here, right, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Alrighty. So, how do you guys spend uh, spend the lo- spend this uh, next eight hours resting? City's well, pretty much just gonna go pass out. <laughs> and Aryan will uh, will spend four hours on watch um, doing his origami, and um, and then he'll transfer the other the other portion to get get rested. Uh, Tiny oh, Hut obscures you from all prying eyes unless it is someone you allow in. Understood, but I don't trust the Underdark. That is fair. That is completely fair. The Obsidian will, I'll do like six or six and a half hours of rest and, and just lay there and kind of do a watch while he's laying there for the last hour, hour and a half. I say we, we can we can see out of the orb even if we make the outsides right. um, different colors and it's opaque we can still see out. Right. All right. Well, how are you spending the uh, the 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 long rest? Uh, remove one of my outer layers of skirts, wrap most of it into a ball for a pillow, and then I wrap the rest of it around my head and pass out. <laughs> <laughs> Snoring like a like a chainsaw. <laughs> You've never seen her this tired. <laughs> Is that Will or Hillary? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's she's real hurt. She has very little spell slots left. All right. 
So your uh, rest, uh, your long rest kind of passes and uh, it gets to be about the point that the spell has run its course the next uh, the next day and you guys uh, feel refreshed benefits of a long rest question answer my necklace of prayer beads is not based on a long rest it's based on dawn <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what time so, is it? Did it recharge? Can I tell if they're glowing again? <laughs> yes. You don't know when. Okay. But at some point during this rest, it did it did cycle over. Okay. After I wake up, I'll just kind of like sleepily like crawl over to Obsidian and I'm like, can you do that thing where you like see what the weather is like up there? I miss rain. Okay, so I'll do a little thing and cast Druidcraft, and I bet you you're not ready for that, are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually I am, because okay. I, oh. do, I do happen to know what time of year it is, because now I have a calendar for the game. I don't have names ah. for the months yet, but I do have a calendar. Oh. It is roughly uh, spring, getting into early, getting into late spring, so... There's some slight showers. Temperatures are fairly mild, uh, especially in that in the uh, surface region area. Um, winter, the quote unquote winter has dissipated has dissipated to the point that there's more travel. This is kind of like the heart of their uh, late spring, early summer. Um, so, so maybe, maybe a few maybe a few rain showers, kind of deal. Grass is growing. Okay. Light breeze from the south. So you'll see a little golden orb appear and then some fog kind of wash over it, like uh, representing the rain clouds. Hmm. We're going to get back up there again, right? I hope so. Me too. It's starting to feel like we're never going to get out of the ground. It's been so long. Tablas. Do you not, have you ever seen the top? The surface? Yeah. No, not personally. My pa my pappy was up. My pappy had been up to this. What did he think of it? it was kind of weird. Weird how? Oh, uh, the area he was at was there was a lot. There was a there was a lot of conflict when he was up there. Um. He had actually stumbled, uh, stumbled up to the surface while out exploring, and there was a, kind of a huge conflict that had that was going on in the local area. Um, so he was he was kind of lucky. He kind of he was able to get up, kind of get a view around, see some of the uh, surface creatures and sun and daylight, which definitely was not good for him. And then uh, retreated back down. But that was happy. Oh, probably 400 years ago. Didn't didn't feel the need to return, I guess. Not up that was. It was more. It, it was more f south of here, um, so it's been all kinds of weird. The other everything around the around has been kind of weird. I mean, we've had. It's been a while, and things are still trying to adjust. But four hundred, about four hundred years ago, he said it was when he went up there. It's Have you ever thought about going up there? Hasn't exactly been uh, on my to-do list. Not on your bucket list. Okay. I'm kind of hanging out in the, kind of exploring this area. This is probably the closest to the surface I've been, uh, per se, because. Normally, we don't see a lot of surface dwellers down here. So you're the closest I've been to the surface. Well, hopefully we've been a good example. Not everybody up there is wanting to fight all the time. You've been interesting. I mean, you definitely bring light with you everywhere you go and not necessarily a good thing down here. 
must admit I am missing the light. I can't really empathize with that. I I mean, you have your little glowing light thingy, you have whatever, whatever, whatever strange magics that cause the cause everything to light up down here. I mean, you have light you bring with you everywhere you go. So I, I, I don't know why why you would miss light. It's not the same. The sunshine on your face, there's nothing like it. I don't think you would like it. We would have to get you a lot of sunscreen. Probably. Yeah. I gotta say, Cavalus, it's been nice traveling with you. You've been really helpful. Appreciate you coming with us. I know it's not your cup of tea. You'd probably rather be home, but we wouldn't have made it this far without you. Actually, this is probably the most excitement I've seen in a while, because, you know, being a, my family's all been explorers, and so it's like, I came here, we came here, and I've been hanging out in the Enclave. Uh, I mean, my, with my uncle being in charge of the Enclave and whatnot, it's been rather kind of dull. Glad we could provide you with some entertainment. I, didn't, I wouldn't go that far. I'd say it's exciting. I didn't say it was entertaining. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> you feeling better, Cavalus? Yeah, we just need to avoid those molds. I agree. And, and the fireballs. sucked. And the fireballs. I don't Both know how you can avoid those. But it definitely is not a good sign if magic is getting, if if the weave is getting that dangerous. That was bad. But the oh. roll. Right, Shaggy? Yeah, you guys are really pretty when you're on fire. Sorry, did I say that? <laughs> Drag. That gives you just an eyebrow. <laughs> it gives you a raised eyebrow. <laughs> oh, come on, it's not like you weren't thinking it either. Uh, one one thing Shrag will have been doing while they're resting is he'd have been like ske sketching what remember the brown molds into the book and just pondering over what actually could be done to help with them, given the fact obviously that he likes flames and they seem to like it too, and that's probably not a good combination. <laughs> No. <laughs> so are we in a relatively safe environment here? Uh for the moment, yes. So I'd like to turn to Cavalus also and say, look, I we had planned a rendezvous point, but now there's no bridge, rope bridge to get back there, and it's been quite a distance. We should maybe set this as a new rendezvous spot. If we pulls get out, separated. Um, looks at her map and he goes, that was one way. There is um, there's an old uh, cathedral north of here. That could be uh, in a couple of paths that might lead back to that stairwell. But then she points out, indicates on the map, the next district north of you happens to be one of those big cathedral type places with the giant with the giant dwarf god statues. Okay. Why don't we make that as our as our new rendezvous spot, just in case you feel the need that you have to get to leave because things are getting dangerous. We'll meet you there. Yeah, those are easily identifiable, so that's probably a good spot. Good. Gotta color code the next area in the map so I know so I know where we are. <laughs> All righty, so. She kind of gives you the idea on how to get there. There's a couple of places uh, tells you needed to get up there. It'd be a path that leads north or backtracking to the next district. Again, 
trying to go in a northerly kind of direction from where you're currently at. Okay. All right, guys, we ready? Yeah, I think we're ready. I think we should proceed. Rock and roll. Find out some uh, snacks as we travel. Ah, yes, food. We need to eat. Rations. Mark your rations, take your meals. Bag off his round little bag of uh, sauteed mushrooms. <laughs> That's not a few left over. <laughs> Donna. Snacks for everyone. All right, so as you exit out of your area and you start to uh, make your way, make your way south, um, you're starting to hear uh, various uh, shrieks, moans, and gibbering echoing through the caves. As you get close, as you uh, pr- continue to progress south, coming from a couple of, I un- un- can't really tell where it's been. It's fairly faint comparatively because of uh, as you're going. But I need you all to make wisdom saving throws. I uh, know. I know this again. <laughs> if you're within ten feet, don't forget the plus three. <clears throat> oh, well, I don't want to roll this. I'm scared. Ah, oh, thank God. Wow. Twenty-one? No. Yeah. Obsidian? Dirty. Dirty twenty. Okay. Shrag? Eleven. Anari? I think mine was a ten plus three, so thirteen. Okay. You all succeed. Oh. <laughs> that was a close one though. <sighs> Yeah, you're hearing you hear the sounds and it's a little dis- disconcerting, uh, but because you can't really tell what I mean, for those with the helms, you're hearing kind of a, a gibberish in abyssal and several other languages, um, but you just you're hearing it and it's just kind of that it's not fun. Do we know what that sound is yet, where it's coming from? Because this is the second time we've encountered it, right? Yes. Second time you've encountered it. Is there, like, any kind of check we can do to see if we can tell what that is, where it's coming from? Ablis actually failed it. Oh. Cablis, what is that? Uh oh, she's gonna have an effect. Oh. Fireball. Concern. Um, as you're as well as you're phrasing that question, and looking around, you see Cablus kind of stop for a moment and look about and just start picking up dirt and shoving it in her mouth. No, no, no stop, stop. What are you doing? And are you it's okay? like she sees a little bit of lichen and starts, sho- and she just kind of shoves these weird things into her mouth and just kind of sitting there eating it right there as as you, as you phrase that question. Okay. So there's some kind of snuff Eblin thing. She probably didn't like your rations. I guess, I mean, you don't have to eat the rations, but is that okay to eat? She doesn't respond, she just eats. Uh... Can, can she we, does this can for about the her? next can six we minutes. Her? Is she actually swallowing or just chewing? Looks like it. Can we restrain her? Yeah. 
You can certainly try. Go ahead and uh, roll a grapple. Can I help with that? Just like kind of try to keep her hands away from her mouth? Yep, you can certainly help. So that'll give Obsidian an advantage. Oh, 16 and 17 on the die. So what is that, a strength? So 19? Yeah, you're you're able to kind of hold her hands, but she, she's just kind of there, kind of in a daze. After about six or so minutes, she blinks and immediately start doubles over and just starts to vomit back up all of the all of what it was, what she was trying to eat. I hold her hair back for her. <laughs> and after that, she just does not look good from that whole from that whole experience you're all right you're all can right. we move on like now back comfortingly <laughs> yes let's 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 get the hell out of here agreed let's go and she grabs it and starts to make her way slowly <laughs> does she have a water skin uh yeah Okay, I'll uh, kind of like unlatch it from her belt and hand it to her. Here, we should probably. There you go. She kind of drinks it. Does the does the first one where she swigs and then and you know that swigs and spits it out. Takes some more. <sighs> and just thank you. You're, you're okay now. <laughs> it's whatever that horrible sound is. It does things to people. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. As you guys uh, progress down and around, um, as you come across, the, the trail kind of curves a little bit, and as it curves, it merges up with another ca cavern. And as you guys are kind of looking about, uh, you notice uh, Anari and Will just out of the corner of your eye, a group of mushrooms. Obsidian would notice it, notice it too. It's like these group of mushrooms that seem completely out of place. How big are they? Medium creature size. Do they look Mushroom. like mycanids? Go and roll a nature check. Oh no, are they shriekers? I got your class. I don't know. In nature, that's five. <laughs> Mine is a uh, 18. Hey, there we go. I was going to say, based on the um, the homeschooling that Shrag did on the, the mushroom stuff, would we recognize them? Um, It's not going to be shriekers. God. So, but it is, but it does. It uh, with the with the with the Narian says as, as they look very similar to the Mykonids you guys had seen. This is a group of uh, you see you see two kind of there, and as you look about, you notice two more tucked to, and it, the way they're positioned is they're like tucked away around some boulders, so it's just kind of a passing scan you happen to catch something that looks a little out of place and they're there and they're trying to be as motionless as possible so based on the um information that we had from the myconid leader i'm guessing that these have probably been corrupted by the um mind flares whatever they were using on the myconids unknown Is there a way past? There's a way past them, right? If they're yeah, just you sticking can behind totally. boulders where you can get by them? Okay. Yeah, they're not blocking your way. They look like they're trying to be unnoticed. You know, like how some creature... Uh, go and roll an insight for me before I say any more, just so I know where to, where, where to stop myself. Uh, Jesus, another nat 20 wasted. Plus 5, 25. Dandy they Beyond look like, giving today. given the position of where they are and how much they're trying to remain motionless, it looks like they're actually trying to be as hidden 
and inconspicuous as possible. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna fly up on my broom. How high is the room in here? 20 feet. Okay, it's only 20 feet. So I'll fly up to the ceiling and just scan around and see if there's anything else in here that they might be hiding from or see if they're maybe hiding from us. Uh, go and roll uh, investigation. Investigation is 17. Other than the sounds of the shrieks and the creeps and all that crazy, crazy craziness, uh, it doesn't appear to be anything else in this cavern. Uh, as you look down, it, um, you see a little bit of like a very faint glow down the cavern where it looks like it leads into the next uh, district. And that glow is fairly familiar as in one of the garden areas that with uh, that you've passed through a couple of times already. Oh, okay. I'll fly down and say, I think there's a garden up ahead. I don't know if maybe that's where they live. I don't think they're hiding from anything but us or maybe the sound. I, I asked to look at Catalyst's map again. Okay. Uh, where do, Catalyst, where do you think we are headed? And where are we now? Um, we are in the southern, we're in the southern, southwestern area of another uh, residential area, residential district. Uh, further down this path, it looks like there's another garden area, um, which gives us a couple of options for heading toward, because we need to really double back west to get to where we, to get to the, get to where some of the stairs are that might be where the illithids are that you're trying to find based on the information we got up in the garden. Like we have to pass through, we have to pass through at least one garden, depending on which way we go once we get to the garden. Right. You guys have any preference on what direction we take? The fastest. I need to away from those scary voices. I do not like those. Yeah. That's true. So through the garden up ahead? Yeah. There's a garden area up ahead. All right. Should we try to see what's up with these myconids, or should we just leave them be? Instead of violent ones, then maybe we end up fighting them and having to kill them when we don't really need to if we can cure them. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's keep going. Then. Yeah, so you guys continue to progress through? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So as you go through, you come into another one of these garden areas with the fountains and the walkways or all overgrown with uh, various fungus and stuff and that is where we will take our mid-session break <laughs> so thank you everybody for hanging out with us so far we're uh, gonna take about 10 15 or so to grab drinks and stand up walk about a bit maybe uh some ivs of energy energy stuff who knows <laughs> and we'll be back in, about, in a few minutes so stay tuned Peel the banana Peel the banana and we're back. How is everyone doing? Did to get their coffee, their drinks, and all that fun stuff? Oh, yeah. We got the big cups of coffee. I, I'm sorry. I I, I, in watching the mail. Will pull out a, like a mason glass with a clear liquid. Maybe it's the country boy in me, but that... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a hangover just thinking about that. <laughs> that is a really awesome coffee cup, Anari. <laughs> just came in the mail. Nice. I like that it's the big size, not like the little dinky ones. Oh, we'll hold it up again? I, I haven't seen the ones that come in the new. Oh, okay. It's a good oh. size. And then on the other side. Yeah. That is from our Teespring store. All right, back to our game for our second half. See where we uh, where we will end for today.
Um, so you guys are entering in a garden area. Uh, it's got various walkways. The garden is, of course, now all fungal type uh, growth, various stalks and whatnot. Um, coming in, you see a couple of overgrown paths and leading about, according to Cablis's map, uh, you're going to want to try and navigate along the north western uh, portion of the garden. Try to avoid crossing through the middle because there's a couple of offshoots. Um, so you can't to because you're trying to get west. Okay. Um, as you're coming in, and of course you got the various fountains and whatnot that some of them don't appear working, uh, but others do. Um, the liquid, the water has got a variety of colors, and the ambient light in here from all the lichen and whatnot is fairly dim lighting, so you have a little bit more uh, range of vision, even though everything is kind of washed in a, a variety of like purples and stuff. How do we wish to proceed? Carefully. We just want to follow Cablis by the shortest means possible to okay. get where, we, where she thinks that we can accomplish our mission I think alright trying to be stealthy yeah. as much as possible as well oh with that re that said go ahead and roll stealth checks are we still within the hour of pass without trace from oh this is the room? next day ah of course it's just I've slept since then well <laughs> <laughs> in game you've slept since then 22 oh, no. I went downstairs and slept it's fine in that 15 minute break we had <laughs> 20, um, 23 for Narian. Well, 19. 19? Draggy? Oh, I got that 20, so that's 13. It's all good. And Cabalist gets a dirty 20. Nice. Well done, everybody. All right. So you guys are kind of progressing through, and because you've had a variety of experiences in the last couple of gardens, you're trying to be very going through. Um, as you kind of going about, uh, you're noticing various uh, some of the some of the growth, whatever will and Anari. Um, as you guys look, you notice there's some various like the around the fountains. There's like like a natural forming kind of rust stain that seems to be on that. Several other bricks of stone. This is a lot more prevalent in this area than you've seen in the last couple of gardens you've gone through. And ever so faintly, you're hearing kind of a popping sound from below your feet. Anybody else hearing that? Like popcorn. Where is that coming from? You get down closer to the ground. Start uh you start to hear um kind of a, a high pitch whistle start to go. Oh doesn't sound like a shrieker. Sounds like a tea kettle. All right. Uh -oh. So first there was popcorn. Now there's, now there's tea. I'm very confused. Um. Okay. Nature check. Go ahead. I'm so confused. Shraggy's gonna go take shelter under a mushroom. What'd you say, Shraggy? I'm gonna go take cover, cover under a mushroom. <laughs> on the nature check not sure what phenomenon is causing it but as you discuss it uh, you're all starting to become aware of it and it's coming from below your feet I need you all to make dexterity saving throw oh crap <laughs> 18 plus 5 couldn't tell if that was sarcastic or not. Obsidian? 19. 19. Will? 12. Frag? 24. I told you I was hiding. Nari? <laughs> 11. All right. So you guys hear it, and then all of a sudden that, that, that whistling sound gets louder as below your feet uh, various cracks start to form and this high-pressured 
extremely hot steam starts funneling up right below you. You will obsidian and track. Y'all managed to dodge mm. out of the way of Anari, not so much. He takes uh -oh. ten points of fire damage from the extreme from the heat of the steam as he it as it uh, erupts and dissipates. Not more fire. Um, ten points. Do we take half? No. No. Okay. You don't take half. Okay. Um. Uh, Will, uh, you, I need you to make a perception check. Terrible. Ugh, nine. Oh, All right. wait. Uh, I get advantage on that for some reason. Sentinel shield. Ha. Nice. That's worse. But I get to add a four. That makes it an 11. All right. So, um, as you kind of, as you and you and Anari kind of dodge <laughs> to one side, and and Shrag and Obsidian dodge to another, and you land, you notice you landed um, probably about ten feet or so away from one of the busted fountains, where there's this large kind of brown kind of stain in it, and you notice that the 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 stain kind of doesn't look now that you're this close it doesn't look like it's it lo looks more than just a stained color it looks like it's actually some type of growth some type of uh like plant-based growth and as the as you as you guys land it 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 started to uh kind of collapse in on itself and a, and a cloud of spores kind of uh, erupt out. Um, need you both to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, crap. This room sucks. Are you uh, within 10 feet, Will? Yes. Uh, yeah. Plus three. Thank you. 10 for an Aryan. Alrighty. 23. All right. So, Will, you managed to you managed to kind of wave off the effect. Uh, on our, what did you said you got on yours? 10. 10? Yeah, 10. All right. Um, Will, you managed to kind of you, you both kind of breathe this in. Will, you kind of shrug off the effect. Anari is going to take uh Take six points of poison damage from the effect. Okay. Um, and you just kind of start to cough, and it's like this kind of putrid kind of taste in your mouth as you breathe these in. I'll just lay on hands for myself for uh, using the five points to remove the poison. Alrighty. Just still good. lying on the floor there, and I roll over to my onto my back, and I'm like. That was not popcorn or tea. <sighs> Slowly get up. Ow. You okay, Anarian? I help Anarian up. I'm fine. Jeez. <clears throat> Stuff tasted horrible. Uh, so after you kind of kind of get through that and you kind of learn, you now you know to avoid getting too close to these to those brow to the rust stains as you go the rest of the kind of journey is a kind of quiet every so often you hear the explosions of steam uh throughout the uh garden um you come around there's a there's a path that leads north and then the main path continues around west uh Kavlis is kind of like uh, uh we could come up and around but it's faster if we just kind of keep traveling through on this path in the garden oh the best way so, lead the way map lady so as you as you wrap around 
Family's telling me they're going out shopping. They're going to leave me here, even though I have no idea what to get from the store. <laughs> D&D shopping trip to the shops. <laughs> There's a family recipe I'd like to do again, but I'm so fuzzy on the recipe, I don't even want to mention it. <laughs> and the main ingredient is really hard to get today. So coming around, uh, there's a path that shoots off west as you step through that path. Uh, you come into another uh, district. You see the, the road forks again. One path leads more kind of northwesterly. The other one is more of a southwesterly, and Kabbalist kind of directs you in that direction. Okay. So as you kind of go through, it's a straight path, so to speak. But you notice coming in there that all along the path is more kind of fun is more of this fungal type of of growth. It's like yeah. this area is kind of spilled over. You got all these tall uh, fungus <laughs> uh, stalks uh, grow uh, growing, and as you're going through, uh, Will and Anar, you notice that. At, so, at several points along the path, there's what appears to be webbing strung down from bits of the of the taller uh, mushroom. Getting back into spider territory. Is, um, is it similar to what we've already experienced in the couple of areas we've already been? Or is it different? It's not as prevalent, like it's not like coding everything. This is just, you see bits uh, bits of it kind of going. Um, go ahead and uh, roll uh, active uh, perceptions. I didn't hear all sharing the information, so it's like, oh, spider webs, <clears throat> fun. 18 for Anarian. Yeah. 12. The dice not being fair to do. Fifteen. When are the when since when are they ever fair? They're never fair. Yeah, that's, never that's fair. true. All right, what are we rolling? I was working on perception for a second. Thank you. Eighteen. All right. Um you kind of, as you guys are looking about, you do see signs, uh, like there's some giant spiders. Only, only a few of them. Like you're only seeing about three spaced along here. They're kind of in that kind of ambush thing, but you're aware of where they are. Would that give us the element of surprise on them, or no? Uh, it would if you choose to attack them, or you could try and stealth your way through the cavern into the next area. After our last encounter with spiders, Anarian's a little pissed off, so he's going to engage. <laughs> That's, That's perfectly fine. <laughs> that is perfectly fine. So closest one. Closest one. Go ahead and make a ranged attack. First will be a 22. And the second will be an eight, so that, that's going to miss. So the first one is going to be 12 points magical piercing damage. <clears throat> if we have a surprise round, is that an advantage? Um, yeah, because you, they're not, not, you haven't triggered any webs, so you're aware of them, they're not aware of you. Um, well, then can I make the miss, can I try again? Because I didn't roll with advantage on the, on the attacks. Yeah. In that case, it will be an 18. Uh, yeah, 18 will hit, so what's the total damage? So, uh, 20, uh, 20 points piercing. Okay, real quick, let me get some initiative rolls so I can get the tracker going. Obsidian, what's your initiative? 16. Uh, Anari? It is going to be 23. Drag? 
I've, I think I've been sniffing some of the uh, the spores because he's, he's on it. Twenty four. Not twenty. Well, I I think I sniffed some of the other spores because I rolled two threes with my advantage. So that's a seven. <laughs> not those ones. Those ones. These ones smell nice. Those smell horrible. All right. Wrong one. So twenty points on the first spider. All right. Um. Okay, so we'll go through the first first round because uh, you're initiating a surprise on them. So Nari went. Uh, next would be Obsidian, then Will, then Shrag, and then we'll start the initiative count. So Obsidian, what do you do? Okay. Um, do I need to use Steady Aim to get advantage, or since we have surprise, I auto get advantage? I don't care which way we do it. You, you're um, in surprise, so you could. You're you're already having a, okay. advantage. Doesn't stack, so it's up to you. Right. 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 I just, I'm going to take it one way or the other. So, um, yeah, yeah. 19. One spider, 30 feet, one spider, 60 feet. And the third one is like 90 feet. So Greg would have, would have seen little bits of it. Okay. Uh, the one at 30 feet, can I go up and engage him or is he 30 feet up? Uh, he's a, it's about halfway up the cavern. This cavern's about 20 feet high. So it's right in, feet. right in there. So he's about 15 feet up, up in the air, uh, on top of one of the mushrooms looking down. All right, then I'll just use a bow. Um, so that was a 19 to hit. 19 will hit. Uh, let me see. That is 10 that magical is piercing. Ah. Uh, <laughs> hey, no, no sneak attack. How rude. <laughs> well, you know, they, he had a couple arrows sticking out of a couple of the eyes. So, you know, it was, it was a, little, a, little, a little hard to, you know... <laughs> I glare over at Anarian. Nice shot. He just smiles. <laughs> All right. Um, Will, what about you? Now there's a spider 60 feet away and another one about 90 feet away, kind of in a in a zigzag. All right. I'm going to move my 30 feet towards the one that's 60 feet away. And okay. as I'm flying forward, I start doing my... Com my verbal and somatic components for guiding bolts. Alrighty. Which I will roll with advantage. That 16 hits. And 17. Okay. So that's going to be 16 radiant damage. Alrighty. And it is glowing. And he's glowing. All right. Track. Okay. I assume I can see the one that's out at the 90. We'll go for that one. Okay. Because there's one to see it. And that's going to be a 22 to hit. That will hit. Roll damage. And that will be eight points of fire damage from a firebolt. Alrighty, eight fire. Boom. Cast your, cast your dice. I'm not doing any craziness. All right, cool. Okay. All righty, that brings us to uh, top of the initiative, which is going to be Shrag again, because he beat Anari by just one. <laughs> that's, o that's okay. Shrag's going to, like, shake his hands just to, like, <laughs> can you just work? And he'll cast Fireball again on the one that 90 feet. <sighs> that's a nine to hit. Nine does not oh. hit. <laughs> it actually impacts <laughs> one of the other mushroom <laughs> stalks nearby it. Shrag, Shrag's gonna like just like look at his fingers and just go, guys, guys, just give me a minute. And he's gonna just sit down like a grump on the floor and just like, that's oh, on Anari. <laughs> All right. So um, bonus action cast uh, Hunter's Mark. Okay. Uh, and then I will attack again. Uh, it's going to be 25 and 23 to hit. Both hit. It is going to be then 24 points piercing damage. And the second spider is dead. That just leaves one spider remaining. Obsidian. Oh, wait. Obs Anari, do you want to take any movement? No, I'll, I'll stay put. Okay. So that brings us to Obsidian. Uh, the last spider is down the way. That is got a couple of fire bolts that you saw Shragnaz hit. 
you'd have to move a little closer to you can kind of see them because they're still kind of that faint lichen glow about okay uh so i'll walk the movement that i need to get there okay uh and i don't really have much other option and i want to make sure it's within 80 feet so i'm not at disadvantage on the bow uh and it was a 19 on the die plus seven is 26. that will hit and it was a measly seven points of non-magical piercing seven points piercing okay brings us to will lightning bolt <laughs> well actually can i see it because i was From... 90 feet i moved 30 so now i'm 60 so if i move another 30 i'll be just within 30 feet which is my dark vision range yeah, uh, yeah, you. I mean, it's a dim light, so you get a little bit further. But given okay. the given the fact, following Shrag's bolt, seeing an impact, you kind of have a good idea. So move closer enough, you can see it. Okay, and uh, I'm actually going to use um, Toll the Dead on it. Uh, yeah, because that's a sixty foot range. So that is a Wisdom saving throw. DC? 16. Fails. Sweet. It already took damage, so you get to roll your d12 version. Yeah. That's a two. And that's a four. So that is six necrotic damage. Alrighty. You see a writhe in pain, but it is still alive. Try. <laughs> Back to the top with Shragnat. <laughs> Just fling the fly below. <laughs> Whatever. Let's give it an 18. That will hit. That's more like it. 14 points of fire damage. And it is dead. Oh. <laughs> That's alright. He still sat there with his arms crossed. He's just like flicking his finger out like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should be glad I didn't use Fury. Sorry, go ahead. Small... No, I should be glad I didn't use Fury the small one. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So as you guys uh, continue to progress through, <clears throat> you see the path uh, kind of comes to an intersection, and there's a path that leads south. And you can see that it looks like it's another garden, but it's not as large. Um, and then the path continues uh, progressing west. Uh, Cabalus is uh, saying it's probably faster. We just keep this way. So as you progress, uh, keep progressing west, um, it, the path ends and leads into yet another large cathedral type area with a with a lot one of those humongous statues in it that this is, is a, partially crumbled but is mostly intact still standing on its pedestal this isn't the one that she was indicating we were going to use as our rally point is it no that one is is back uh northeast of your current position <clears throat> um there <clears throat> now as you guys uh enter into uh this space um, need you all to roll uh, perceptions. Seventeen for an Aryan. Yeah. Obsidian. Twelve. Will. Twenty-one. Craig. He's still got his hat pulled down over his eyes and grumbling and his arms crossing in the mood. That was a nine. 
<laughs> um, as you guys enter in, you notice that there isn't a whole lot of uh, there. There's some natural light in these in this big kind of cavernous space uh, from several uh, crystal points. But you notice something else as you're walking. You start you, at the the ground as you kind of walk along. Seems to have more of a crunch to it. And it's a different crunch than gravel. And then you start to look that there are piles in various spots and these little narrow kind of uh, pathways. And as you look closer, you notice that it appears the entire floor is covered in bones. Uh, well. uh, stop in my tracks and look yeah. around. Is there anything on the ceiling or anything trying to? Your vision doesn't allow you to see because there's the 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 with the, how cavernous these spaces are. It's like three hundred feet up. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the whole the but you see. Various piles and the big statue has got uh, bone piles leading up where you could actually, if you with the right agility, you could probably scale the bone pile to get to the actual feet of the statue around the pedestal. Wow. From the Let's get on the broom. Get on the broom with the track. <laughs> Let's make a dexterity check. <laughs> he would totally do it, I know it. Yeah, 15, yep. He like looks down, looks at the bone, looks around, basically leaps like a scalded cat up in the air and just like grabs onto the broom, like wraps his legs up around it so he's hanging underneath of it. Go on, fly, I don't like it here. <laughs> uh, I'm the... gonna help him up. Go ahead, sorry, John. No, no, you're good, help him up. Yep, just want to help him up and definitely want to fly around using his vision to see what we can see at a further angle. Make sure we're not going to get surprised by anything further ahead. Yes, please. So what does Shragnose do? Like stand up on the broom, his foot feet are like in his over, and like his wrap his arms round Obsidian and be like looking over his shoulder and then it whispering in his ear, kind of where, what you can see. All right. As you as you're kind of looking about, you see as uh, you do a do kind of a knowing obsidian in his search pattern, he would swing it all the way around. You notice that there's the entrance you came in. There are two entrance. There's two entrances on the western side, um, and then there's an and then there's an entrance uh, on the southern side. The southern side looks like it leads to a, one of those massive stairwells that you guys are already familiar with, but all throughout this room are the bones. And as you get a chance to look, uh, go ahead and give me an investigation. I already got an at 20 for a 22. Yeah, all of you, if you're all searching. This is, this is very weird. This is very new to you guys. Cablis is just not... She's kind of got that look of dread on her. So, Anari got an at 20. 21. Obsidian, what'd you get? 21. Will? Investigation? Yes. 21. Craig? 13. <laughs> um, so, as you guys are looking, you're noticing that these bones range in size. There are huge rib bones. There are small little, there are smaller bones of like medium creatures. Or, I mean, the whole gambit of sizes all kind of littered about in this. Few skulls here and there. Hmm. The entrance that led to the stairs, did we see any creatures around it or near it or on the stairwell or? No, you're not seeing any indication of anything there uh, around it. It's just, it's you look in and it's the massive stairwell and it's uh, spiraling down. Spiraling down. 
I'll ask Cabless from what she knows. Um, how close are we to what she thinks is where the description the Mykonids gave us of the Mind Flare Lair? Well, the look of best to guess to try and seem confident and and whatnot points to that entry that leads to the stairwell. Okay. And so... that is where we'll end for this week because... I don't know. That is a good good enough stopping point because now you would lead into the mind flares. Oh boy! <laughs> I felt that was much Yay better than trying us. to force it <laughs> later. It's like she just points. <laughs> yep. Oh man. Yoink. Yoink. Oh gosh. So just squeezing the point. What could go wrong? <laughs> oh. That's a long list of things. Oh, we made it, guys. We finally made it. Great stopping point, too. <laughs> yeah, stopping point. That means when we come back next Saturday, we'll be going right into that. Yeah, glad, glad we got a rest. Yay, I think. <laughs> yeah. So thank you everyone for hanging out with us. Uh, granted, this is just a wee bit shorter than a uh, normal session, but you know, we, we get to a good stopping point in the story. Why well, keep pushing? <laughs> and I can tell my cast is really tired because some of them were up really late doing some crazy, crazy things. <laughs> crazy people. And then did our math wrong and woke up an hour early yeah. unnecessarily. Oh, I see. <laughs> that makes sense, man. Uh, that w that's convincing. Very convincing. Uh, so real quick, running through the things. Thank you, Sirenscape, for the background musics and soundboards. Uh, shout out for Stream Beats, because that's how we cap and do our break music to kind of change and, you know, kind of emphasize that focus between the two. Uh, thank you to my cast for uh, agreeing to uh, do this day instead of our normal day i had a interest i had a seminar i was wanting to attend yesterday for a project i'm working on which i'll talk more about later as that time permits um thank you to everyone in the community for hanging out with us this morning that's it's really awesome and appreciated you guys are amazing uh continue uh all the support you've given please continue we love it we appreciate it and we want to keep growing um so if you're new here and you want to hit follow on Twitch, that's great. Uh, if you're checking us out on YouTube, please remember to hit the like, subscribe, and bell notifications so you know when more videos are coming. Uh, this will come up out on all the audio podcast channels uh, soon-ish. I will get it out there so you can recap on that. And if you want to support us to help us grow especially that tabletop talk id we were having after the break please go to patreon.com slash scooby studio and consider being a patron there that is probably one of the best places to do that and we have a discord where occasionally i ask for some feedback and ideas so uh, link to all that here in the twitch panel channels and all our other places for social media if you want to follow us on social media scuba studio is pretty much it uh some variation with a zero or, a, or an l but all that's listed check us out give us a follow all those things um yeah tuesday night scuba in the rye uh gonna chat about some various things next saturday shadow watch 10 a.m eastern challenge accepted 8 p.m eastern and then sunday with scoob uh next sunday at a regular time of noon eastern and Gonna work on that ogre zombie and see what I can do with it. <laughs> uh, any shout out, <laughs> plugs, commentary from my cast before we uh, head out and get much needed rest, breakfast, and drinks? Biscuits and gravy? Can't go wrong with that. Biscuits and gravy are always a good choice, but I think I'm gonna go, try to go out for a cinnamon roll this morning. <laughs> I almost would drive to Virginia Beach to a Cinnabon. It's the closest Cinnabon to me. That is the place for cinnamon roll. Uh -oh. <laughs> we made we, we made Hillary grumpy. <laughs> it sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. With that, you guys have a great afternoon, a great week, and we will see you on our next stream. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.